Lisa blaring out with Eric Flair show. We're here at the 2019 NAMM show with the man, the myth, the legend, Tracy Guns of LA Guns. How you doing, Tracy? Well, I'm 53, I'm still five foot eight. I'm married, uh, I have one child, and I try to play guitar, and I'm doing great. You have a new album coming out called The Devil You Know. That's right. Now, I understand from my life that the devil you know is sometimes better than the devil you don't know. Now, is that what the album's about? That's what it's about. It's, it's uh, a friend of mine said that to me. I was making big changes in my life, and uh, they said, Oh, the devil you know is sometimes better than the devil you don't know, or you know, vice versa, whatever. And that just stuck in my head. And I'm, I'm sure like eight other bands have used that title for songs. I have a personal expression is that it always takes a very long time to really get to know one person. You know what I mean? Like you get on with somebody and then all of a sudden, you know, some true colors fly out or something like that. So it's, it, I tend to, as I get older, I gravitate towards people that are like not very cool. It's better. When people are cool, they're the ones that seem later on to be not cool. You know what I mean? So, you know, when you're in your 50s and old, you get philosophical just because you're bored. I think we call that the honeymoon period, Tracy. The hun exactly. I fall for people's bullshit a lot, you know. I'm a nice guy, you know, but uh, the devil you know, I don't know. I'd rather go for the devil I don't know. <laughs> if you're going to be obnoxious, I want to know now. The last album was amazing. How did that reinvigorate you as a musician? Well, you, you know, even more than the, the making a good album after 12 years of not doing L.A. Guns, the thing that was invigorating was the very just the first time me and Phil got together to, and played an L.A. Guns song, an old one, you know. I was like, oh, that's a familiar sound, you know, and that was kind of the invigorating part was just the whatever it is I do with a guitar and when he sings and those two things come together it definitely makes its own sound you know um, so when we finished that last record the missing piece record and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to everything you know the vocals are on it everything's there and it's mixed I was just like wow you know how could have I have ever second guessed myself on this band on this chemistry whatever you want to call it you know and I'm very proud to be in LA Guns, it's a great band. You guys are a family now. Yeah, the band is a family. Big time, I mean, you know, down to, you know, Shane, Johnny, Ace is in, Ace Bon Johnson's recently joined the band. And we run it like a family and, uh, you know, from the head down and we just, we make decisions together. Um, I mean, I have the, the final word on everything, but, but it's, it's a committee. And, uh, you know, we just don't really like make stupid decisions anymore. Now, why Ace Von Johnson and what has he brought to the L.A. Gun well, sound? I wanted Ace for a couple of years, you know, when we started. I wanted Michael Grant uh, from the beginning of Phil and I getting back together because I felt that he really embodied the youthful spirit of L.A. Guns. I mean, you know, that's the kind of the weird thing about L.A. Guns is it's a young person's band and Phil and I aren't very young anymore. Um, so I really liked having Michael in the band and that that wasn't going to work out. There was some issues, some internal things that are nobody's fucking business. I love Michael Grant, great guy. Um, and then we had Adam come back and play guitar um, and he's got his own issues. And I didn't want to go after Ace a couple years ago or you know a year ago when, when Michael was gone because he plays in Faster Pussycat, Tammy's one of my oldest friends. And I just not, hey, Tammy, I'm gonna take your, I'm not like that. Uh, but Ace made it known that like, hey, I'd be willing to go out with you guys and do this. And he's just, you know, he embodies a youthful aspect of LA Guns, you know, and he's a great player and he's a great guy and he's a real LA Guns family member. And uh, that's what, you know, it has to be now. You know what I mean? It, it's just, it has to be smooth and it has to roll and we kick a lot of ass and it takes a lot of energy and, can't be bothered with people's personal dramas anymore and things like that. Because this is a time to be productive. Small amount of work, big results. Yeah. That's what you shoot for it now, you know? Yeah. People don't pay attention very long, so it's like, we gotta make great records, we gotta do great shows, and they gotta remember them for as long as, as, they, as humanly possible these times. You know, one of the things about LA Guns is you guys were always so raw and in your face. From day one, you know, I mean, LA Guns was set up as a metal band, you know, when I was like 17 or 18 years old. Um, turned into 
a heavy rock band. Now we're more of a metal band again. And, uh, you know, it's meant, always meant to be a raw thing. It's, you know, it's, it's a, always been a hybrid of, of, you know, punk rock, metal, and classic rock, you know, and uh, there's no room for big, you know, slick production and stuff like that. You know, we, you know, we like Motorhead, you know, that production's good enough for us. Yeah, know? well, I mean, everything is present there. The bass, the drums oh, are yeah, in baby. your face. Everything's where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Van Halen won, you know, that's a great yeah. example. Yeah. Have you checked out the Van Halen Destroyer? No, here? because I already got, I got the, 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 what is it called? The, it's, it's the one with the Dan Electro headstock, the, the star body. Uh -huh. I just got that. It's like, I can't keep spending money on Eddie Van Halen. Uh, Stephen Riley was doing shows as LA Guns. What's your opinion on that? Oh, he's doing the M3 festival. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. He's a piece of shit. That's okay. what I think of it. Okay. You owe me a lot of money, you fucking ugly fuck. And fuck you. Well, now, you know, this movie just came out called Brand vs. Band. Mm -hmm. and I didn't know that. Yeah, and so what the documentary is about is how sometimes the brands are bigger than the actual members of the band. How, now, how do you embrace that? I think I think that's probably true in some cases, but real fans, like, you know, if I'm going to go see, you know, Aerosmith, Tyler and Perry got to be there. You know, it's, it's, it's pretty straight up. Led Zeppelin, you know, Bonzo, John Paul Jones, Plant, and Page. That's another scenario. I don't give what you call your band. Those four guys are in that band. That's what I want to see. Um, L.A. Guns is not that band, and the reason I know that is because Phil had a version, I had a version. When we're together, we do four times the business when it's our names with it. So, you know, I feel sorry for people whose brand is more important than the band. A lot of musicians I've met are really uh, desperate. I understand why, but it's like, you know, you got talent, you know, Show it, do it. I mean, if I was going to go after anybody, you know, or talk shit, what do you think it would be, you know, Guns N' Roses or something? It's like, no. Speaking of Guns N' Roses, have you been to any of the shows? In I haven't seen Guns N' Roses. I was, t I was telling my manager about it. Uh, I saw them at the L.A. Coliseum with Metallica. I think that was the last time. And so good. You know, Slash is so good. Um, I love the, the record when it came out. You know, I mean, I, you know. Yeah, I mean, it was my band, but they, I couldn't have, it wouldn't have done the same thing with me in it. You know, that combination of Slash and Axel, that visual, that sound, that's that chemistry that sells that brand. Give me two songs off the new album that you really love. Oh, man, that's a good record, dude. Jeez, uh, there's a song on there called Gone Honey, which is, in a way, sort of would be considered the most, like, mid-tempo Whatever. It sounds a lot like if the cult and Blue Oyster cult made a song together. I really like that song, but it's not indicative of the rest of the album. Uh, the song, The Devil You Know, there's a song on there called Going High. That's my favorite song. It won't be a single, but it's the best song on the album. You recently got married. Congratulations. My wife's right there. How did you know she was the one? How, did you, how could you trust well, her? She told me, she said, I'm going to use you. And because she was what so. I said. Oh, it's not? I said, I want it all. She said she wanted it all. And I said, okay, you can have it. And we met on Instagram, and we just trusted each other, and we got married, and it's and we been, like the same music. We like the same music. We have the yeah. same mental wrongness. How are the conversations? That's the thing is, you know, when you finally meet somebody that can understand you, you know, if you're a little bit off kind of a person, um, that's home, you know. And uh, I've been struggling with those kind of issues my whole life with people in general. I mean, I suffer from, you know, bad anxiety and de depression, all those things. And, uh, you know, it's not easy to deal with, but if you're with a like-minded person, it's really easy, you know? And uh, she's also an audio archivist, you know, UCLA grad, uh, well-read, good-looking, good cook. How did you know he was the one? Um, I got in your car, that's the first time we met, in his car, we went to a show. Oh, he, you got my joke, because you, you said, I'm playing two songs at the whiskey tonight. And I was like, waiting, I was like, okay is that a public service announcement or an invitation and you thought it was funny so i'm like okay he gets it yeah. and then we just talked and talked and talked and yeah you it's, it's, kept coming over. this is a simple relationship you know and my cat immediately loved you that was her that's how when she <laughs> I was knew like, okay. the cat. that was yeah that was the first day yeah. how does it feel to be married oh man it's so nice what about the temptation? Yeah, I'm what tempted. Highlights of working with Brides of Destruction and Nikki oh, Six. Oh man, everything. 
everything. That was such a cool band. You know, we we would rehearse for eight hours a day and play music for a half hour a day and just like tell stories and eat food and and do interviews and do anything but like be creative. And then we had a deadline and we finished that first record and we went on tour. And you know, to be honest, the highlight for me was playing Livewire and you know, piece of your action every night. You know, come on. I love Motley Crue's first two records. They, they, there'd be no LA Guns without those two records. So, uh, you know, looking over there, stage right, there's Nikki Six. Like, all right, cool. You know, that was it. The Blaring Out Show.